Alrighty guys, welcome back. And in this video, we're gonna be covering a concept called triangulation. Now, before I even tell you guys the definition of it or how to do it, I'm gonna show you a scenario of something that we're trying to accomplish, but we can't. And then I'll show you how triangulation solves that problem. So right now, we're gonna be playing as white. And our king, let's say that we just wanna get him to this square, G6, because on that square, he's gonna be pretty much touching all pawns in an ideal position. Now, at first we may think, all right, it doesn't seem that hard. Let's just go uh, over here. But then the enemy king goes here and all right, he's controlling these injured points. All right, so let's back up and, uh, well, every time I go here, he goes there. So, all right, let's back up one more time. And, you know, thinking about this, what would be really nice and allow my king to get to g6 right here is if instead of being my turn to move because when it's my turn to move i go here he goes here so if it was actually their turn to move and they went there first and i can't even do it because it's not legal but if they were had to move right now and they played f7 right now then at the moment in time that i played f5 then they would actually have to be pushed back because of course they couldn't come forward However, it's a little bit tricky with my moves, so how do we solve this problem? Well, that answer, my friends, is triangulation. So instead of playing king to f5, what we're gonna do is we're gonna play king to e4. Now, let's just say they play a move like king e8. Of course, they can either go here or here. It doesn't really matter in this example. Our next move is king to f4 and let's just say they go back to f8 saying that okay if we are gonna come in here then you know they want to get as close as possible and now our last move in this technique is king to e5 now if we look at this position this you probably noticed that all right this is exactly how this tutorial started however when we first started this video it was actually my turn to move. So it was my turn to move and I moved over here and that's when we had that problem. But now that we triangulated to E4, then F4, then back to E5, you notice that it is now black's turn to move. So now black is gonna go F7 and now I can play king to F5 and they are now forced back because the king, my king that is, is controlling these two squares the pawn, of course, is controlling these two. So now they're forced back, and I can get right into that square G6 that I was aiming for. Now, before I just show you guys the rest of this game, the rest of this lesson, I want to talk to you guys about why exactly this works. And this little technique is a little bit tricky to remember and remember the exact moves, but if you remember why exactly it works, then you're going to know how to do this in any situation. And that is because of this. You see that through those maneuvers, my king took three moves to come back to the same square. So it took three moves, an odd number of moves, to reach the original square again. Now this enemy king, because of this pawn blocking these squares, it can't do the same thing. Whenever it moves, it has to go left, then right. So an even number to come back to the same square, or right or left, it doesn't matter. But essentially, when both of our kings are trying to land on the same square and I am able to take an odd number of moves and they are only able to move in an even number of moves, then I can essentially lose a tempo. Or in other words, as we just saw, allow myself to end up in this exact same position with them to move. So this is ideal in, um, very important in end games, pawn end games especially, when your king position is critical and you wanna essentially, just like opposition, make it their turn to move. And just to show you guys how you would finish this game, once you got into G6, then they would play something like G8, have the opposition, which is uh, you know probably their best strategy at this point. However, then you can just capture their pawn on H6, and with two pawns and a king, there's not a whole lot they can do. You just gotta be careful not to stalemate. So king F7, King to G5, protecting both pawns. F8, G6, King to G8. 
and you can just deliver a check on f7 and let's say they try to block that pawn um going for some stalemate opportunities this is one that you really don't want to move your king over here so instead you can just start pushing your h pawn h6 e7 king g7 and from here this baby is going to become a queen and there is the game so again that was just the ending but the core concept of it, this video is triangulation if you don't quite get it watch it one or two more times and uh finally once you have it cemented in your brain you're ready to move on to the next video so thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time all right guys actually i lied real quick before i let you leave i was actually editing this video and i saw one thing that i know people are going to have questions on and that is what if even though our plan is to play e4 then f4 then e5 what if uh after we play e4 then instead of the king being obedient and playing e8 what if they just play f7 instead well then obviously we can't play f4 but what we can do is we can actually just triangulate in a different way by playing f5 and instead of this triangle we get this one so they would play f8 and then we can either play g6 right now but sticking with the theme of the tutorial what we can do is we can play e5 and now we end up in the exact same position that we started with that it is now their turn to move but of course if you were in this position you would want to play g6 and uh that accomplishes our mission but then i couldn't teach you guys about triangulation so anyways again thank you guys for watching and i will see you next time